Hello y'all, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jocelyn Jam. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you and welcome. Please stay here for a little bit and if you are interested in my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If this is not your first time, thank you for coming back and welcome. In today's episode of Living Consciously, we will be speaking about something that I think is really important and that is emotional slash mental abuse. Emotional abuse is one of those things that it's a, it's a little insidious, a little sneaky. You, you really can't figure out if you are being, you know, being mentally abused or if you find yourself in an emotional, emotionally abusive relationship. Um, see, I, I think about it this way. If, if physical abuse, if sexual abuse is black and white, emotional abuse is gray. It's an area that's a little hard to pinpoint. You can't really often tell if someone's, you know, showing concern or they're trying to be controlling and it's just a little harder. Nevertheless, an abuser, whether they're, in a, se they're a sexual abuser, a physical abuser, or an emotional abuser, what they want is power. They're trying to exercise power over you. They're trying to control you. They're trying to put you, put you in a subservient position while they are in a dominant position, whatever the case. All of these forms of abuse are really terrible and need to be spoken about, but I really chose to speak about emotional abuse first simply because it is one of those things that you're not really taught about. Like when I was growing up, no one was teaching me about emotional abuse. No one was teaching my friends um, about emotional abuse. I mean, we would learn about physical assault, you know, physical abuse, sexual abuse. Those are overt. You can tell that someone's being physically abused. You can tell that you're being physically abused. You're being sexually abused most of the time, not always, but you can tell. But with, with mental abuse, it's a little harder to, to figure out if you really are being abused. And so that's something that we were never really taught about. Even when I read it in books, I thought it was more of a Western concept you know and um it wasn't until i really you know became an adult and started thinking about these things that i realized that actually it, in, it's not a western concept it's a thing that's prevalent all over the world and um it is something that is worth speaking about as often as possible to as many people as we can reach because, see, emotional abusers are often people who are close to you. They know you. They know what buttons to push, right? They know what buttons to push. They know what's going to hurt you. And so they abuse you mentally and emotionally because they know you. So with emotional abuse, of course, there are scars that are left behind. It is unfortunate, however, that we cannot see those scars like with physical abuse, for instance, you know, but the scars are just as terrible, just if not worse than the scars that physical abuse leave on one's body. And so today, what I'm really going to be talking about are signs to watch for. And these are probably not the most common and they're definitely not the only signs to watch for. There's so many more, but these are the signs that I have seen that I, I have heard of, you know, when friends would tell stories. Now that I think back on it, I'm like, you know, that was being emotionally abusive, you know? And so th these are signs that I have seen, things that I have heard or have read about. Um, and I hope that these help you, you know, or help somebody get out of an emotionally abusive relationship. And take note, anyone can be an abuser. It doesn't have to be a man. It could be a man or a woman. So anyways, here are the signs you should be watching for in a relationship. The very first sign is control. Your partner is controlling. Now this, it means exactly what it means. They control you. They, they control what you wear when you're going out. They control what you 
posts in social media. They control who you speak to. They don't want you speaking to certain people. They don't want you eating certain things. They don't want you dressing certain ways. They just constantly tell you, you know, what they think you should be doing and they want you to do exactly those things. And usually they just, it's disguised as concern. And this is where we have to learn, you know, to discern what is concern and what is controlling. You know, they want, they want you to be doing exactly what they want you to do. And usually it's not beneficial necessarily to you. Sometimes it's beneficial to your abuser. Sometimes they, they, they will say, you know, I'm doing it for you. Don't eat these things. You're too fat. Look at your flies. They're ugly. You have stretch mags. Look at this. Look at that. That is controlling. And that is shaming you, you know, using shame to control you. Um, don't wear that makeup. Don't talk to that person. These are all signs of an abusive relationship. If someone's too controlling, please, it's time for you to get out of there and get help if you can. Number two is your partner pushes boundaries. Now, ideally in a relationship, um, there are rules and boundaries that you, 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 that you have, right? Like, and usually you would speak to your partner and say, you know, this is a heart push for me. This is my boundary. These are the rules. This is how this relationship will function. Ideally, that's how it will work. But if you are in a relationship where the rules are made by your partner and all you are is the follower, you, they don't listen to your opinion or you're even afraid to share your opinion with them, you know that you're in an emotionally abusive relationship. If they don't want to listen to your opinion, they are the ones who make the rules and you have to follow exactly what they say you have to follow. You don't have a choice or they don't give you a choice or a voice in that conversation. You are probably in an emotionally abusive relationship and please you should get out of that relationship. The third sign is threatening you. Threats. Now, if someone's constantly threatening you, say for instance, you know, they made a rule and you decided that you didn't like that rule, that rule and you wanted to break it. You know, they may threaten you, you know, if you don't do this exactly the way I want you to do it, I'm going to leave you. Maybe you're married, they're going to give you a divorce. And the worst one, the one I really hate more than anything, is when someone threatens you with suicide. Now that I can assure you is the height of emotional abuse. Like that's how I think about it. Like if someone's threatening you that they're going to kill themselves, that is an emotionally abusive relationship. They're threatening you because they want you to do things a certain way because they want you to do something for them. That is emotionally abusive. Please do not condone things like that. Do not let your guilt eat you up because someone's threatening to leave you to commit suicide, to divorce you. Um, relationships like that are, they don't, they're not running on love anymore, on love and compassion and whatever it is that relationships run on. They're running on guilt and fear and tricks. And um, like I said, your abuser often knows you and they know exactly what button to push. They know what you're afraid of. They know what kind of person you are. They know what they can threaten you with, you know, into succumbing to whatever it is that they want you to do. So if you are in a relationship like this, please, please think about it again um, because you probably are in an emotionally abusive relationship. The fourth sign that I have heard of, unfortunately, I've never gotten to see this one, but I know it's a, it's a, it's a thing, is isolation. They isolate you from everyone else. You know, they make you think that everyone else hates you. They don't want you talking to certain people because it's easier when you are alone and you feel like you're alone to depend on, on a particular person. Now, if you have friends or family who can come to you and talk to you and say, hey, this is not right. You know, you shouldn't be doing this. They shouldn't be doing this to you. 
it's likely that you can get out of that sort of relationship. But when your partner is constantly isolating you, they don't want you going anywhere. They don't want you talking to anybody. They don't want you going out with your friends. They don't want you talking to your friends. They want to be the only person in your life. They're isolating you. And there's usually an ulterior motive for that. You know, like why would someone want to keep you away from everyone else unless that was your decision to isolate yourself from you know the world and be at home because that's more comfortable for you that's different but when your partner is making you stay away from everyone that used to care about you that you thought cared about you and making you doubt you know the relationships that you have built over the years uh sorry that you have built over the years and over time you are likely in an emotionally abusive relationship and please you should seek help or find the ways to get out of that relationship the next one is one that i that really scares me you know i mean all of them are scary but this one scares me the most and that is gaslighting and if you don't know what gaslighting is it is basically when the abuser makes you doubt your perception of reality makes you doubt your memories makes you doubt yourself makes you doubt you know what actually happens or they just make you feel like you're you're not sane they make you doubt your sanity and um for instance say you you had a fight with your partner who may be the abuser and um they say something and later you're trying to say you know this thing that you said hurt me and they categorically deny having ever said that and they turn it on their head and they're like no you probably misunderstood that or you said that it was you who said that 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 sort of thing you know and they make they're so categorical about it that you you begin to doubt if you actually that actually ever happened if you're mixing up the story or it could just be you know you're trying to have a conversation with them and they're telling you you know what i i'm not going to listen to your crap they they don't want to listen to you they just want to make you feel like you're less. And if you're in a relationship like that where things constantly happen and your partner constantly twists it to say no, nope, that's not what happens. You'd never remember anything the way it happens. You always remember it your own way. If you're in a relationship where you constantly hear something like this, you are probably in an emotionally abusive relationship and please you should think about getting out of that relationship. The last one which is sort of like a, a segue from the fifth one is basically blaming you. So your the abuser constantly blames you for for their own bad behavior. And this this is really especially seen in um physically abusive relationships. You know, they hit you and say this is all your fault. You know I get angry when you do this. So you know I get angry when you do that. If you hadn't done it, I wouldn't have hit you. That's that is an emotionally abusive thing. You know, they condition you to be like a little doggy, you know. It's all my fault. It's because I said this. It's because I did this. It's because I didn't cook him potatoes tonight. It's because I cooked the potatoes 5 minutes more than I should have cooked them. It's because the meat was a little overdone. you know all of these excuses that your partner comes up with to excuse their own bad behavior that means that you are probably in an emotionally abusive relationship and you should figure out how to get help now like i said at the beginning of this video there are many more these are not even the most common they are prob they are definitely not the end of the list. I've only spoken about 6 of them here, but there's so so many more and I think it's really something that we need to educate ourselves about is educate our girls, educate our women, educate our boys um so that we're aware of this things happening in relationships and we may be able to get ourselves out of this relationships and um these are things that you you're born with. we learn them as we grow up and we get out in society we learn these things from movies that glorify them we learn them from books that glorify them we learn them from our families from our fathers our mothers our neighbors we we learn all these things and um because we're not talking often enough about them people sometimes don't see that it is a problem in society and i really do think it's a big problem so um yeah 
that that's it for today i really do hope that you learned something from this video even if you did not enjoy this video that's okay but i do hope that you learned something and if you did learn something please hit the like button share with your friends and families and loved ones and um yeah if you didn't subscribe yes that's the other part of it subscribe please um it helps me grow my channel and i am just really grateful for all of you coming here and being a part of conversations with me love minna daisuki <laughs>